This is the first of two videos where a systematic method for solving problems will be introduced. This video introduces the technique and applies it to one fairly simple problem. The next video will have two additional worked out problems to see how to apply this technique in different situations. The technique that will be introduced is a fairly general one. It can be applied to almost every problem in the sciences and engineering. I recommend that you apply this technique to all problems when starting out so that it will become second nature to you. In the first step, you identify what you are being asked to solve. This may seem like an obvious thing. However, approximately one-fifth of errors in problem solving in general chemistry occur at this step. In the second step, you identify the relevant information given in the problem to obtain a solution. In the third step, you devise a strategy to solve the problem independent of the specific information given in that problem. It's only in step four, where you implement your strategy, that you plug in specific information given in the problem to determine the solution to the problem. In the last step, you determine if your solution is reasonable by using approximations. You're not looking to achieve a, the exact correct answer in this step. Instead, you're looking to get a quick ballpark estimate of what the answer should be. To show how this strategy is implemented, I'm going to go back to a question that was asked in the last video. In the solution to that problem, I skipped ahead to step three, in which I devised a generic step strategy and went from there. So let's start from step one. So what's the problem to be solved? Looking through, we're looking to determine the weight of an Irish wolfhound in terms of stones. The information that we're given is the mass of the wolfhound in pounds, 110 pounds, and the number of pounds per stone, 14 pounds per stone. The strategy that we devised was we formulated a conversion factor to go from pounds into stones, and then we applied that conversion factor to convert the weight of the wolfhound into stones, or using an equation, x pounds, times y stones per z pounds equals a stones. Implementing that strategy, we're just plugging in the information in 2 to the strategy in 3, and we obtain 110 pounds times 1 stone per 14 pounds, which equals 7.9 stones. To estimate if this is reasonable, what we're going to do is we're going to look to see how much five stones equals in pounds, and how much 10 stones equals in pounds. Going through and multiplying five stones equals 70 pounds, 10 stones equals 140 pounds. So 7.9 stones is in between five and 10 stones, 110 pounds is in between 70 pounds and 40 pounds. So it makes sense. We're now gonna go through and solve a problem that we haven't seen before. Applying the steps that we laid out, the first step is identify the problem to be solved. Going through and reading, what we find is that the problem that we're trying to solve is, will toluene float on water? In the second step, we have to determine what information is being given to us in the problem. The information that's being given to us is the density of water at 25 degrees C. That's one gram per milliliter. We're given that a volume of 145 liters of toluene at 25 degrees C has a mass of 127 kilograms. And finally, we're given the information that in order to float on water, the density of toluene has to be less than the density of water. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch from PowerPoint to writing out steps three and steps four, the strategy and the implementation of that strategy, because for these longer problems, it's far easier to see how you go through them as I write them out. 
this is a relatively simple problem. So the strategy that we're going to use is also going to be relatively simple. Essentially, what we're going to do is determine in the density of toluene and see if that's less than the density of water, which is equal to one gram per milliliter. We need to get the mass and volume of toluene. It's given to us in the problem in kilograms, but we need to convert that into grams so we have common units. We have to do the same for the volume, converting that from liters to milliliters. We need to devise a conversion factor to go from X kilograms into some value in grams and that's 1 times 10 to the 3 grams per kilogram. Kilograms cancels. Multiplying through gives us x times 10 to the 3 grams, which is equal to y grams. For volume, we're going to do the same. A liters of toluene times 1 times 10 to the 3 milliliters per liter. Multiplying that through, liters cancel. We're left with A times 10 to the 3 milliliters, which is equal to B milliliters. The density of toluene is going to be equal to Y grams over B milliliters, and we're looking to see if that's less than the density of water. We're now going to go through and implement this strategy. This simply will involve plugging in the values given in the problem into the equations that we devised in our strategy. So the mass of toluene is going to be 127 kilograms times our conversion factor, 1 times 10 to the 3 grams per kilogram. Kilograms cancel out, and we're left with 1.27 times 10 to the fifth grams. The volume of toluene is going to be equal to 145 liters times the conversion factor, 1 times 10 to the 3 milliliters per liter. Canceling out liters, we're left with 1.45 times 10 to the fifth milliliters. We're now going to go through and calculate the density of toluene. 1.27 times 10 to the fifth grams divided by 1.45 times 10 to the fifth milliliters. 10 to the fifth cancel. We're left with 1.27 divided by 1.45 grams per milliliter. That equals 0 0.876 grams per milliliter. The density of toluene, as we said, is 0 0.876 grams per milliliter. This is less than the density of water. This means that toluene will float on top of the water. What we've determined is that toluene can float on water. Now what we need to do is use approximations to determine if this is a reasonable answer. We can do this in two ways. The first is to realize that kilograms per liter and grams per milliliter are equivalent to one another, and that 145 and 127 divide those by 100, you get 1.27 grams per 1.45 milliliters. The density by definition has to be less than one, therefore toluene will float on water. The second thing that we can do is we can approximate 1.27 as one, 1.45 as 1.5, take one gram per 1.5 milliliters, and arrive at an approximate density of 0 0.66 grams per milliliter, which is lower than what we calculated, but it's in the ballpark, and it's also less than one. To summarize, we've devised a strategy for solving problems and broken it into five basic steps. 
In the first step, we define the problem. In the second step, we identify relevant information. In the third step, we devise a strategy to solve the problem. In the fourth step, we implement that strategy. And in the fifth step, we use approximations to determine if our answer is reasonable. In the next video, we'll be applying this strategy to two more slightly more complicated problems.